This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Now in its seventh year, talk like you've never heard it before. Until midnight tonight here on the east coast of the United States. Squeezing out another one. At least that's the way you put it, right, Larry? <laughs> Squeezing it out like taking a big dump. Jesus. This is our, our little gathering of Larry Bubbles Brown and Alex Bennett. And yes, on the screen you still see a animation of Larry and the words Larry Bubbles Brown. And the reason is because Larry doesn't yet have a phone capable of video. Right. Now, they're about to give you a new phone, aren't they? I'm supposed to get a new one, yeah, but uh, we'll see. Now, what uh, what kind do you have now? Tell me. I got the flip phone uh, with Kairos, Kairos Shira. I don't know who makes I think Qualcomm makes it. Kosira? Yeah, because there's something like that. Yeah, that I don't think they make them anymore, do they? I don't think so. So what? Are, when, when are they sending you the replacement? Uh, sometime before the end of March. Sometime before the end of March, and is it yeah. going to be a smartphone? I think we get to pick. They are they're offering a smartphone, but uh, well, when it's time you know, to I pick, would, I wouldn't be able to figure out how to use a damn thing. Well, well when it's time to pick, let me know. And I'll tell you which one, okay? Okay. Because uh, what you can do is with a new phone, you might be able to actually do um, picture, okay? It'll have a nice little camera in it, and uh, you can then I'll I, I'll walk you through it, and you'll be able to we'll be able to see Larry Bubbles Brown. Yeah, that's frightening. It, <laughs> well, it's not that frightening, is it? Very, very. I mean, scary. how old? You possibly look because you've always looked old. I look old. <laughs> you know, I looked at myself in the mirror today, and I finally, you know, it, it, do you ever, do you ever see the kid with Charlie Chaplin? I have never seen that one. Well, no. the kid is the most adorable kid in the world. He's just, just, you, you it, well, he makes made the audience cry. He was that good, right? And it's maybe Chaplin's one of Chaplin's bigger films, The Kid. And uh, he, The Kid is played by, ready for this, Jackie Coogan. Now, who did Jackie Coogan grow up to be on television? I think it was Uncle Fester. That's correct. <laughs> Jeez, he was a cute kid. <laughs> he was adorable. And I just always wanted to know, I had a joke, I want to know what morning did Jackie Coogan wake up, look in the mirror, and go, what the fuck happened to me? <laughs> and now, lately, I've been looking in the mirror and going, what the fuck happened to me? You know? Um, I, uh, I, I, I look back at pictures of myself and I go, I didn't think I was a particularly good looking kid. But now I look at myself, and I actually was. I mean, at least compared to now. You know, uh, the bags under my eyes, the wrinkles around the eyes. The only thing that's better about the eyes is they're wide open because I had this operation that makes them wide open, um, which is a me considered a medical procedure, so it was taken care of by Medicare. But I look at myself, and I, I go, what the fuck happened to me? You know? Aging's a bitch, man. It really it's is. Terrible. Yeah, and you feel it yourself, don't you? Oh yeah, I just, just look older, feel older, more aches and pains. Yeah, yeah. You go Whitney to the... Brown used to say, "Old age sneaks up on you like a windshield on a bug." <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, what what happened to him? He seems to have disappeared. I don't know. I heard he. I heard he married some girl that's a singer, and he lives down in Texas, but I have no contact with him. Uh, Whitney Brown was, again, another very funny comic. 
uh, who great had, writer who had a great career actually. I mean, he yeah. was on a lot of the late shows and stuff like that. You know, it was Saturday Night Live. He was maybe uh, yes, he was one of the writers. Yeah, I thought he did the desk there for a couple of years. I don't think. So. Yeah, he might have. I don't know. But uh, he, he then he just disappeared, and you go, "What the hell happened?" You know. So you don't you haven't heard from you don't know where no, he is. I think okay. He was. Uh, I think he was represented by Rollins and Jaffe. That's the people who do, did uh, Letterman and did uh, Cavett and yeah. were the managers of Woody Allen. Woody Allen, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and I believe Nichols and May. Yes, that was the first act they represented. Really? Yeah. Wow. They had a great stable, you know. Uh, and and what, they, what they, I guess, specialized in were really smart. Performers, because think of it. I mean, Cavett's smart. Nichols and May really smart. Woody Allen smart. Uh, David Letterman smart. You know, no dumb comedians. You know. Yeah. Uh, they, yeah I think Jack Rollins. I think he lived to be a hundred. I'm not sure. But was close that it? To it? Yeah. And Joffe died before him. Yeah. But anyway, so uh, Whitney Brown. Yeah, it, it, that's a great line. I know. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that bug on the windshield. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going, you know, I'm afraid of dying and I want to live forever, okay? But then I go, if I have to live forever in this state, and, and it only gets worse, you know. I mean, I, I don't have anything terribly wrong with me outside of the fact that I had prostate cancer, but that was easily taken care of, or we hope so. Knock on wood. Um, is this wood? Yeah. I think people here underneath but okay anyway um but you know i mean basically uh, my health's okay you know i got the neuropathy and i got the you know the, the prostate thing you know it, it uh, when they beat up on it 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 has its other problems and uh, that's it you know i don't have heart problems yet i don't have uh, anything else wrong with me so you know, I'm, I'm in. If, if you asked me, I'm in pretty good health. But they give me drugs that make me loopy, you know, which I'm thinking about stopping. But then my neuropathy will hurt more. And, you know, whatever. I am I complaining? Yeah. yeah. Well, it could be worse. You could be like uh, Bill. I think the worst death, like Bill Hicks, is like when you're 31 and things are going great, and then you get a terminal disease. You get a terminal disease. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he he did uh, he had uh, pancreatic cancer, and within six months he was dead. Yeah, yeah that was, uh, he did uh, he did the Letterman they pulled in October of ninety three, and he died in February ninety four. Yep, yep. And uh, I talked to him at the uh, at the punchline uh, when he knew he had uh, pancreatic cancer, but he wasn't telling anybody. Mm-hmm. And he said to me, "I'm getting out of I'm getting out of comedy." I said, "What?" I said, well, "You're getting out of comedy. You're one of the funniest comics around. You know, people look up to you. They they measure their career by yours." And he goes, "Yeah, I'm just I'm just tired of it." You know wow. what he was saying was he was going back to I think it was Texas where he where he That's grew, where he grew, grew up, up yeah. and uh, to live with his mother and die. But he wasn't he saying that, you know. So, you know, he and he went back, and uh, a couple of months later, he was dead. And I, I remember, I, 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 I was at, uh, where was I? I? Was somewhere, and I found out that Bill Hicks had died. And I can't remember who called me or how I found out, but that Bill Hicks was had died, and. Um, I called my friend Shecky and I said over at the Letterman show because I thought maybe the Letterman people would want to know you know because I, I knew at this point I was one of the few people who knew and uh, I, I said guess why I said, well, I said uh, uh, Bill Hicks he said what did he do now <laughs> <You know? laughs> and I went he died and she, there was just silence on the other end of the phone and then they went and told Dave, and you know, 
everybody felt really bad about it because just months earlier they had had that incident on the Letterman show. So, you know, it was a, it was a sad ending for a guy who was absolutely brilliant. And the last thing you would expect, I mean, pancreatic cancer at 32? I know. You know? God. I mean, uh, he was, he, and he, he was, I think he would have been a legend had he lived. You know, he had that kind of take on life and had that kind, he was, the, people always said to me, Lenny Bruce, oh boy, this guy's another Lenny Bruce. And I would look at the act and go, well, He's a good comic, but he's no Lenny Bruce. Because I remember <laughs> Lenny Bruce. I was a fan of Lenny Bruce. I'd seen Lenny Bruce perform. And I knew what his act was like. And um, I uh, I never liked that assertion, oh, he's the next Lenny Bruce. But if anybody came close, it was Bill Hicks. Mm -hmm. Because he had that same kind of outrage that Lenny had about the world around him. Yeah. And... He did it so well. He was just really, he was aces. He was terrific. But. Uh, 32, Jesus. Yeah, I mean, come on. 32? You don't need to die that young. Yeah. So he, he died in February 94, so maybe you found out when you, weren't you over in Norway doing the Olympic Games that time? God, you know, you might be right. Uh, and I might have come back from the Olympics. And in state and came to New York before going back to California. Could have been, could have okay. been. I mean, he, yeah, there's some reason why I was here, okay. But I remember I was here when it happened, and I just, I, I was just, I was devastated, you know. And I liked the guy too. He was a great guy. Everybody liked Bill. Yeah, uh, and then. Uh Sam Kinison died relatively young. Yeah. Out in the road going to Las Vegas. They, they always say, by, they, he gets killed by a drunk driver. So go well, figure. Well, the, the line that everybody had was everybody knew uh, uh, Sam would die from drugs, but not in somebody else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, drunk driver hit his car. Drunk driver didn't get much damage to himself. Sam died, you know, yeah. out on the highway. They pulled him out of the car, put him down on the highway, or the side of the highway. And uh, his last words were something like, he opened his eyes wide and he said, I understand. Yeah, something like that, really yeah. creepy. Yeah, I, I see, I understand. Like he was talking to some angel somewhere or something, know. you know, and and he and he died. Um, again, another tragic end for for somebody. You know, I we've talked about this before, and maybe you can give me some insight into it. But comedians either do one of thing, two things: either they die young, or live to be a hundred, or live to be a hundred. What is that? Is it that there's, you know, I mean, and in this case, these two people didn't die from something they did, okay? It wasn't like they drank too much and one night they ran into a tree or something like that. I mean, uh, uh, it, it, uh, 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 what's his name? Um, um, oh, boy. See, here I go again with these names. Uh, the comic who died where his daughter was driving the car and hit oh, a tree. Schimmel. Schimmel. Um, Bob Schimmel. Uh, see, I, in my mind, I, I said S, okay, but I couldn't come up with a name. Bob Schimmel was driving in a car with his daughter. Her daughter was driving. He daughter was, was driving. Yeah. He was riding in the car. Something Something happened. I can't remember now. She swore. Roll it. It was an SUV, and uh, she survived, and he died. Yeah. Although he didn't, he he was alive for a few days after the accident. So. Yeah, but when I heard about that, I went, God, you know, life is so freaky. 
you know and and it's funny how many people I know is it starting to happen to you how many people you know are dying you know, just talking to somebody last week about that, how you see these people we knew were suddenly, God, they're turned off like a light switch. and Never going to see him again. Well, uh, we lost a, a friend of mine, P.J. O'Rourke, uh, who was a writer and, you know, I guess in some ways a comedian because he was very funny. He was funny, but uh, he was, I think he was only 74, right? I think 74, 75, something like that, yeah. What'd he die of? Uh, cancer, lung cancer. Oh, okay. Might might have been a smoke. Everybody goes, oh, he's a smoker, huh? You know, because uh, very few people die of lung cancer unless they were a smoker. I mean, or it, you know, ground zero on nine eleven. You know, and they inhaled all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, but basically, I mean, smokers. It's a smoker's death. You know. God, I'm glad. I, did you ever smoke? Never, no. Like, because my parents did, and I hated that smell so much. I wouldn't go near a cigarette. Really? You never tried them? Never tried them. Never tried them. Okay. Because I smoked. Do you remember? I. Do you remember me as a smoker? I don't remember you smoking. No. You don't? No, that's crazy. It's, I quit at the Quake. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was just a radio station I worked at. For. I I quit at the quake. I remember what happened. One morning, I'm I'm sitting there, and having a guest on who uh, was a doctor who wanted to tell everybody they should quit smoking. And I said, Oh well, you know, I'm going to quit eventually. I guess you know. He said, Well, let's give you a breath a breath test. And they I had me breathe into this thing as much as I could or something, and they said, Well, you have some lung dysfunction. From smoking, and as oh. soon as I heard that, a, just a switch went off in me, and that switch was the one that said to me constantly, the, "I will finally quit when I see that it's starting to affect me." And I saw that it affected me. So that day, I went into like Walgreens and bought a thing called Bantron. Do you remember Bantron? No, I remember they had a. They had all kinds of things that stopped smoking back then. Yeah, but this was Bantron. And what you do is you take it and it just gives you, a, you know, the nicotine you need without you having to inhale it. And then you can kind of wean yourself off the habit of cigarettes because c- cigarettes are habitual, you know. And, it sounds like a very hard habit to break. Yeah, uh, especially when you come from a generation where smoking looked really cool. <laughs> you know, yeah. it comes from a generation where they actually had ads where doctors were recommending cigarettes. Yeah, yes, nine out of remember? ten doctors recommend Luckies. You know, uh, the one, the tenth one is dead from cancer. Anyway, <laughs> so um, I, um, I, I just quit that day. I said, and I'm not going to quit. This is a hint, folks, for all of you out there still smoking. And there are not a lot of you, but some of you out there still smoking. Don't say you're going to quit because that's failure. You're asking for failure, right? Say, I'm going to see how long I can go without smoking. Yeah. And that's what did it for me. And I, I, I found that about uh, two months later, I was, I was past that point where I was afraid I was going to go reaching for a cigarette and never have smoked since. How many were you smoking a day? Um, about two packs a day of a thing called Sherman Cigarettellos. Uh, they were these very thin s- cigarettes, brown paper, okay. and uh, no preservatives or anything in so I think maybe that helped save my life because they say a lot of times that the preservatives in uh, in tobacco, which they were, you know, they would take crap tobacco and then they would add taste to it and with chemicals and the, to, so it would keep burning. They put nitroglycerin in there. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> or glycerin or something. It would keep it just, in other words, cigarette never went out, okay? These Shermans would go out. You'd have to relight them. They were cigarettes, not not cigars or anything else 
And and so because they didn't have the chemicals in them and I had smoked them for years, I think that maybe saved my life. I, you know, and I quit when I was 42. And so I haven't smoked in 40 years. Wow. You know. And you, uh, did you, when you're smoking, do you not notice how bad cigarette smoke is? Or how, you mean, how the bad smell it, it leaves I'm, around everything? Well, no, you don't notice it because, you know, you, it's part of your environment. You know, you don't. In other words, I, my, I smoked. And my wife smoked. Okay, and our apartment probably smelled of smoke, but we didn't smell it. You know, okay, be, be, I just remember coming home from the clubs. You'd just be reeking of smoke when you people get smoking those. Well, here's what I never could figure out. Let we could change the subject slightly and maybe get your take on this. Um, why is it that when you fart? It smells pretty good to you, <laughs> but not to anybody else. Now, maybe that's the same thing with the cigarettes in a house. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. am I right? Could be. Uh, am I right about farting? Yes, unless it's... you and you don't go. Hey, that's terrible. In fact, sometimes if it's particularly pungent, you go, "Wow, that's a good one." <laughs> Better savor that. You're one. never bothered by your own farts. You're just bothered by other people's farts. Exactly. <laughs> Why is that? Turn that into comedy gold, bubs. Comedy, it's gold, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, comedy gold. But anyway, you've been working it all lately. I always. I'm ask looking you. for work. Things are. Uh, I keep hearing things are opening up so i'm hoping to nail some stuff so. yeah yeah how, well how'd you make it through the pandemic i guess on medicare right uh, medicare and i picked up a little unemployment from the state so that got me through financially how much unemployment did they they gave unemployment out during that period of time they were giving us uh i think it was a couple of grand a month a couple of grand a month that's incredible. Yeah. That's incredible, and that was because of COVID, right? Yeah. Wow, that's that actually probably got you through really nicely between that. I and can't the, about live on that. I think so. I, the state was not, the state was giving you like a hundred and fifty a week, and the feds were adding like what was it for for a while? It was six hundred a week. They would add to that. So, so the, you you were making seven hundred a week. Uh, times yeah. uh, and is it how long did that go indefinitely or it was about a year and a half and then they uh... wow that's see we didn't have anything like that here you should have no I, we didn't really you know maybe I should have applied to the state for you know but well, if you were eligible for it you could probably get it retroactive now did you have to have a job you have a job but you're self employed that was uh, that was the self-employed. Yeah, you had to be self-employed. Oh wow! Maybe I missed out on a lot of good money. Well, you can get it retroactive if you're eligible. Really? You should check yeah. on that. Look into it. This federal government? The fed the feds added on the feds. That was the big part of the money. If the state paid you a little, and the feds added for a while it was six hundred. Well, so you had to get the unemployment from the state. And then yeah. it would be added to by the government. Yeah, because I had I got unemployment here when I was first out of work, and I got sixteen hundred dollars a month from the state. So that's about four hundred a week, like you were saying. Mm -hmm. um, but then it stopped. But I'm wondering if I should have applied for it again during COVID. Yeah. You know? oh. Check into it. You might be eligible. Yeah, I might be eligible. Yeah, yeah. The old, the old fart is uh, this old fart on the phone wants to know <laughs> if he's eligible for you. Boy, inflation's going through the roof. We need everything we can get these days. Yes. Have you been to the grocery store lately? Yeah, it's uh, some of the shit I buy went up fifty percent in one a week. You ready? Ready for this? I I went to my store a few weeks ago. And I always buy avocados. Avocados, um, four. A two for four dollars. I passed by the same thing the other day. Two for five dollars. Wow. You know, that's quite a jump if you think about it. You know. Dude. And I used to be able to get two avocados for a couple of dollars. So, you know, 
uh, it's just little things like that and you go oh boy here we go again and gas prices boom right through the roof so. they say it might go to seven dollars a gallon what are you paying for it now right out here it's close to five close to five wow oh glad i don't have a car anyway hey listen that's it we're through. Yep. That's all We're she done. wrote for Bubs and Put I. Put a fork in it. Hope I didn't talk too much. <laughs> you can never talk enough, Alex. <laughs> uh, we'll talk to you next week. Bye bye, Bubs. Bye bye. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, how are you, everybody? Thank you, Bubs. Appreciate it. Uh, we'll see you next week, as we always do. Um, let me see here. Um, well, we have just one person waiting to come on right now. Uh, this is getting this is getting grim. Usually, you know, on like our Monday show, uh, I, when I go to the phones, they're they're all lit up. I mean, the phones. When I go to the Zoom, they're all lit up. I, I'm I'm an old guy. I talk about talking on the phones, folks. When you're doing a show like this and I call this a radio show but it's not a radio show my my wife Marjorie still calls it a radio show and even when I was at at, at Sirius XM I you know I did not call it a radio show I, well I did call I guess I could call it a radio show because they call it Sirius XM radio at one point I don't think they call it that anymore uh, so you know we could say we were doing a radio show but you know were we really I don't think so well, anyway, I notice now that we have a bunch of people waiting, or at least a couple of them, enough to enough to get a citizen panel going. And uh, oh, wow, what was that noise? Uh, uh, we got uh, we got uh, Jeff here, and we got Alan here, and we got Brian here. Hello, everybody. How are you? Hello. Good man. Nice. Doing good. Doing good. Nice lighting you finally gotten going there. Uh, Thank you. No, not you. What? It looks like we're, it looks like you're in a storeroom somewhere. A basement. Yeah. Hey, my office. It's a yeah. mess. That's your office? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. God, I've seen, you know, I've seen offices in porno film companies that look better than that. I will bet you have. I started watching the Bill Cosby thing on uh, Hulu. Bill Cosby <laughs> thing on Hulu. What is that exactly? Hey. It's just a documentary of, you know, it's like so far like five or six episodes. I just started the first one. Oh, really? About, about from, yeah. Yeah, about him from, you know, the very beginning and, you know, who people, you know, knew him from. I think like you mentioned sometimes, you know, that all this good that he did, you know, and they, they're starting off with when he, when he started getting into films and like I Spy, he put his foot down and wanted black stuntmen. Mm -hmm. And they showed some of the stuff, you know, like in slow motion, some of the stuff was really bad. You know, they have black faced people, the, the men to do the stunt. Yeah. So it, it gets into it gets into all that. And it, I'm sure it's going to get into all the, you know, all the good stuff he did. You, you got to remember yeah. that Bill Cosby, forget about his peccadillo for a second. And, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, what's his name? The uh, big black comedian now. Uh, see, my, I can't remember names at all. This, this damn Sorry. drug I take. What? No, which one? Chappelle? Chappelle. Uh, did, did a whole bit in his act about it. And wow. he, he said, you know, you can say what you want to about Bill Cosby, but a lot of the work he did, the way he made inroads for black people in film and in TV shows and the, uh, the uh, scholarship funds that he started and the people he sent to school and uh, one thing, and he listed a whole list of them. He said... These are great works that, you know, you, you measure a person's worth by because these are the things that he felt passionate about. He said, this other thing that's going on, you can't throw all those out just because of what they're saying about him now. And maybe you have to say, well, you take the good with the bad. You know? yeah, they, they, I just started watching the first half of that first one, but, but they also interviewed uh, one of the uh, girls who's a Bond girl and uh they're showing you know the same stuff and, and that's what they're saying that that's the bill cosby that oh, i knew excuse me you know, I he was fighting far right so, and all this stuff so what I, what I forgot to do in all of this is i for, I, I just had myself on and all people could do was hear you so i mm -hmm. just put on the 
the yeah, look at you. The Zoom you feed. I was going to tell yeah. you that, but this you year. found it out. <laughs> yeah, I just figured it out. Well, you know, I'm 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 out of it these days. It really, I am, and it, it, it the lyrica. You're absolutely right. Have you ever taken it? Yeah, it did it the same thing to me. Like yeah. I, I took it like ten years, maybe seven years ago when I hurt my shoulder at Nerve. Yeah, I was I, I couldn't think. Uh, I was forgetting everything. I mean, it's it's a great little Sleepy. pill. I mean, my it works. Know, my, it works on the neuropathy. The side effects are horrible. The side well, the side effect. It isn't like the side effects are horrible. Like no, you know, like uh, uh, um, you, you know that it's particularly addictive or something like that. What it is though, is that it uh, it makes you forget stuff. It just it's makes a cognitive you cognitive impairment. Cognitive impairment. Yeah, and. Um, I, I I think about stopping it, uh, but then I stop it. I stopped it for a couple of weeks once, but then my feet were killing me, you know. So, what do I do, you know? So I so something like that is one of the things that happens. What happens are things like, at the end of the show, I start posting stuff and moving you know, all my programs onto things like the web page and blah 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 blah, and I do all of that. And uh, but I do it in order, in a certain order. Now let's say there's a problem, like Jack calls me and I can't get the show on the air and all of that. So now I got to deal with that, and then I got to come back and pick up where I left off, and I can't remember where I left off. And I'll always leave a step off by having to start. You get my point? What I'm talking about? So, yes. Oh, yeah. Very strange. Very strange. But it's, anyway, it, I, I what happened? If I was in a play in san francisco and and, and it, it was a zorba the greek and we all were on stage the whole yeah. time and i would fall asleep when i was sitting in the, like in the back and then between scenes i had to help change the scenery i could not remember what i was supposed to do yeah exactly exactly and, then, and so i went off of it four days later i was totally fine again i remembered everything well and it, i wasn't falling asleep anymore the, yeah well i mean it's like uh uh, I have I have trouble every now and then. I just block the word Ukraine out of my head. You know, and this has nothing to do with getting older or anything like that. You know, it's not a cognitive thing from age. It's a cognitive thing from the, uh, the the drug. But anyway, so I'm sorry, folks, if all you saw was me for a little bit here, but wasn't going on that long, so so you don't have to suffer. Um, by the way, hello to uh, Trucker Steve. Nice to have you joining us from Canada. Hi. And uh, let me see here. Uh, and Jeff, of course, you're in Georgia, right? I'm in Atlanta. Atlanta, yeah. Georgia. Okay. Georgia. Yeah. Georgia. Yeah. And uh, Brian, of course, is in California, as is Alan. And it rained. It rained where you were? Right. Yeah. yeah. Last 24 hours has been raining. So uh, has, it, has, it has, smell has, it out today, but yesterday it was raining, so it's good. Has the rain been pretty <laughs> bad, though? I mean, has lack of rain been pretty bad out there? Yes. Yeah. yeah. yeah it didn't rain that much, but we got some, some wet. So. Oh, yeah, and Ray's out in California. Too. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. San Francisco behind me, as you can see. Oh, yeah. 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 The, these are the people who are extremely loyal to me because they grew up with me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's only eight o'clock. And it's only if you're on at ten. It may be different. <laughs> Alex, have you tried instead of Lyrica? Have you tried Cymbalta? Cymbalta? Yeah, it, it's another drug like Lyrica. Uh, has a different side effect he, profile. <laughs> oh, that's not exciting. And, 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 well, and, well, but what that means is it, because it has different side effects, it may not bother you. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not, not everybody gets the same side effects. Yeah, so you could get some new and exciting side effects you can talk about on the show. That'd be great. Yeah, right. I think Cymbalta is used for the exciting side effects sometimes, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, probably. It, it's also an antidepressant. Yeah. Oh, oh, well, that's bad. That's bad. They had a they had <laughs> one drug. I can't remember what it was called. Uh, uh, a, 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 Adivil? Uh, not Adivil. Um, yeah, Elavil. Elavil. Oh, no, 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 no. I've had L. Oh, that before. is a horrible, oh, that's mean, horrible. horrible drug. Really? You know. Uh, and uh, I, I'm i sorry. I just, I, th that I won't take. I was on that once, and I stopped it, and then we went to see some friends up in Vermont, and I was nasty all weekend long. It was just amazing. It's the mm -hmm. worst drug ever. Worst what was that one they were prescribing a ton for stuff like this about 20 years ago, and then they realized it was giving people heart attacks? 
And I was taking it actually for my well, back. You know, you're talking uh. about the pain pill. It, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What the uh, hell was that uh, thing? And, and it, no, then they decided it didn't cause heart attacks. Oh, well, but, but by that time, off. by that time, nobody wanted to touch the stuff. I yeah, have some right. of it here. I can't remember uh, the name of it now. Oh, uh, it's an L, I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah um, uh, um, hmm. Oh well. It, it, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, a Cox two inhibitor. Um, yeah. Jim. Cox what? Cox two. A double Cox. <laughs> <laughs> my foot hurts really bad when I'm driving. My right foot in my gas foot. So yeah. I'm driving a load, I hit, have to hit cruise control or, or take my shoes off. And then I'm okay. In exactly. which car? Which car? Calibrex. All my cars with the Cadillac. Celebrex is the... It's Celebrex, the that was it. Yes. That was Just it. Just ask Alan, yeah. he knows pills. But then they found out it was okay. It wasn't a problem. It is okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. if you, it, you know... Um, I was given, a, I was given, I think I was, that's what I was given by a doctor a prescription for when I had uh, 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 shingles. And I had shingles in my eye. Absolutely, right here, it's, right a, it's a, uh, it's 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 closely related to like uh, Motrin and naproxen and stuff. It's in that type of family. Yeah, but it's just a heavier. Yeah, there were several of, of them on the market that were the same type. Yeah, a drug, but they took them off because they had problems. Welcome, but... folks, to Alex's medical center. Here, uh, the I have neuropathy. Uh, yeah. Alex, do I have neuropathy. My foot hurts really, really bad when I'm driving with my gas foot. Yeah. I have to take off my shoe, and then it feels a little bit better. But that man, may not be neuropathy. Hurt. That might be. Where does it hurt on the top? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I have that on my left foot. And, and I guess like one of my my toes numb sometimes. Yeah, it's like the little bones in there or something wrong with them. Yeah. It's like ask, a, it's uh, like uh, a tendonitis. Your fifties, Brian. Yeah, I, th I Maybe think. I'll ask uh, uh, Charlie. See yeah, if I have, no. have it amputated. I think it's like tendonitis is what I think. You yeah, I have there. that. And it, it takes forever to go away. It sucks. So All people right. call up with your particular ailments. And, uh, <laughs> you know, you should. Uh, you're not diabetic, are you, Brian? I was pre-diabetic before I lost the weight. Okay, good. Mm. So that, that's good. Yeah. Well, I, I, it's good that you've lost the weight. You're I don't know what pre-diabetic means. This. Uh, yeah. And so, Brian, yeah, you you're going to have to get a. An automatic. Okay. Well, I remember wait, the wait, medicine wait, I was wait, talking wait, about. Hold on a second, Jeff. Oh, let, let me join everybody oh, else. Hold on a minute. It, it wasn't Cymbalta. It was Vioxx. <laughs> yeah. Vioxx. Jeff was saying something about oh, What were you saying? Uh, I was saying that he has to drive a car with an automatic transmission. And his foot won't hurt as much because you won't use it. Yeah. That's why I use the cruise control when I'm driving to load up. Yeah. Yeah, you Alan, can you put your glasses on and, and get some Steve some glasses and we all you know we all look alike. I have that damn thing in my foot. I can't figure out how to get rid of it. There you I go. Keep, I don't know. We, uh, I, we I read you have to like stay off your feet for a week or something. We just like became that. a smarter oh, looking show. <laughs> yeah, more colors. <laughs> wow. So yeah. uh, it, it, you guys, see my uh, new uh, uh, name on my Zoom here. Fringe minority. Yeah, that's what Trudeau thinks of us truck drivers. Uh, he's going Apparently, to... we're racist, we're misogynists. Uh, uh, you watch it's... too much TikTok? Huh? You watch too much TikTok? No, that's what he said right in the press conference. Wow. Right when the uh, drivers were heading into Ottawa. Before well, listen, you don't have to sell us on the fact started. that Trudeau's handled this thing miserably. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, he uh, he's handled it horribly. You know. So Ray, you use Viox? Yeah, Viox. Yeah. It's also a Cox two inhibitor. Cox, two, I love that Cox two. Well, I don't know. He's, what, he, what do you Vioxx, got? Viox. What about Viox? That's the one that they pulled for cut that yeah. I was thinking of. Yeah, that's that's the one that I was on before. Uh, Me too. They uh, yanked it out off the market because it was about ready to give me a heart attack. Yeah. By the way. Can, uh, let me just bring this up for a second. I was watching tonight. I was watching. I, well, last night I watched Picard with J Patrick Stewart, uh, new, the newest Star Trek offering on Paramount oh. Plus. And uh, not a bad show, by the way. But uh, he on the show looks he looks really old, yeah. you know. And I watched it, and I, I went to myself, well, how old is is he? Uh, and he's supposed to be on the show. He's supposed to be a hundred years old, 
Okay. Um, but uh, uh, I b asked uh, my uh, Alexa how old he was. How old do you think Patrick Stewart is? 75. No. no. 83. He's 81. Yeah, I'm 70. Fuck that. Time. And I went... Do I look the, as old as Patrick Stewart? Well, I guess that's my answer. Anyway. <laughs> no, really. Do I look as old as Patrick Stewart? Have I gotten I to that point? I haven't seen Patrick Stewart lately. Oh, you haven't seen him lately. Okay. When you get a chance, let me know. Okay. You know. But we always don't picture ourselves as old as we actually are. Oh, yeah, I agree. Well, no, I do. Oh, yeah, I, 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 you know, I mean, I finally had that moment. I talked about the Jackie Coogan moment where you wake up in one morning and you look in the mirror and say, what the fuck happened to me? You know, and and um, uh, I, I just wondered, you know, I just wonder if I got to that point. Should I maybe go back to doing this as an audio only podcast that nobody has oh, we to We all know see. what you look like already. Oh. No, no, don't go back to audio. <clears throat> Got your eyes done. Why do you waste all that money then? Well, no, I really. did. No, I did this. <laughs> I had to do this so I could see better. But they this, look, your eyes look better though. I too. could have done this. Yeah. Now, now your surgery has sort of you know gotten gotten healed. You yeah. look much better. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. You don't look over seventy nine. Oh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. I met That's Patrick funny. Stewart 11 years ago. I was I was in London and I watched him and Ian McKellen in uh, Waiting for Godot. And then I went and waited out by the stage door and I talked to him for about 10 minutes on the street. Very nice man. We were, wow. Yeah, he's so down to earth. He doesn't act like a star in any well, way well, whatsoever. Well, I remember he said something to me that still rings in my ear. Okay, is that he did the show when I was at Sirius XM, and after it was over, I said, "Please, whenever you are in town, please come back." And he said, well, I certainly will if I still have a career by then. <laughs> you know, and I went, here's a guy who probably should not have to worry about his next job. But true to the acting profession, you always figure when you sign out from the, the job you just were on, it may be the last time you sign out from anything. Yeah, shit. Yeah, what an insecure profession. <clears throat> but he said... You know, uh, have me back if if I still have a career by then. Sure, I'll be happy to come back. You know, I'll have something to plug. He said, but you know, who knows? And I'm going. If he's feeling this way, man, I should feel real insecure about my lot in life. You know, um, but a very nice man. Very. I remember him as just being, as you said, very down to earth. You uh, know? Just. I. I mean, I didn't expect that. We were talking about baseball, and I forgot I was talking to Patrick Stewart. We were just, like, rapping. Yeah, yeah. Well, well that's the measure of the man, too, you know, that he can make yeah. you feel that comfortable around him and in his yeah. presence. Yeah. You know. How yeah. old were you, Ray, when that? When was that? Uh, so that was uh, 11 years ago, so I was 49. Okay. So you were well acting. How'd you get started in acting? When I was in middle school. Oh, you just wanted to do acting? Yeah, and then I stopped when I was in college because I was doing sports, and then I was like a professional and, athlete. And when, for like when two did years, you get you know? that antenna on the top of your head? <laughs> Stephanie got I'm, her. I'm, she, I'm a Teletubby. <laughs> Pinky I, I Winky. I told you before, Stephanie, she, she picked certain electives and she ended up in drama. She didn't even want drama. Oh. She hated it at the beginning, but then she ended up getting an A last semester. And now she just got a progress report. She has an A plus. Is this your little uh, girl? Yeah, this is the twelve year old. Yeah, sorry, fourteen. Oh my God, she's fourteen. Yeah, 14. Oh, I didn't. I don't know. Oh, wow, that's great. Yeah, Stephanie. So yeah, she's in middle school right now. So she's, yeah, I think she's doing that peach, the uh, the giant peach. What's the James name? James and the giant peach. Yeah, they're. Oh, doing that's real common. That play is coming up uh, in a few weeks. Yeah, so this is our second play. So it's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing really? how how uh, getting an A in something can make you go from not wanting to take the course to keeping <laughs> taking the course, right? Yeah. Hmm. Well, I think she, yeah, she just somehow, yeah, she really enjoys it. So that's great. So, yeah. So it's an easy A for her. Are we getting tickets to the show? Yes, we are getting tickets. To the hey, show. we should all go. <laughs> all of us are locals. Yeah. 
Sure. I don't think Brian wants us there. <laughs> like, well, let's no, see. Adrian Dance, I, want, be I want people to know this. I want people to know this. Uh, out of this group, three of us, uh, t two of us, no, three of us are not in the Bay Area of San Francisco, and the rest are. Uh, Kevin mm -hmm. is, and everybody else Brian is, is, and Alan is. What? Everybody else is asleep. asleep. Right. Right. We uh, were your true fans. Yeah, I guess. This is, and this is all I've got left. <laughs> <laughs> I used to have no, twenty, thirty thousand a morning, you know, and now I, uh, I have uh, twenty or thirty. That's well, we it. all heard you. We all heard you years ago on the radio. So yeah, yeah. I saw. I, I was after last night's show when I saw that guy's posting. I saw some other stuff of yours that you posted from Gapnips. I watched the comedy, one of the comedy hours yeah. with Bob Rubin and Bobby Slayton and all that. Most. That's what I was watching. Oh, yeah, I watched that back. the other day. I was watching that on the way back from Woodland today. Oh, really? Yeah. So I well, my question is, hour. my question is, I was looking for that and I couldn't find those things you said were up. Those shows. Oh, okay. I'll, 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 yeah, I'll, I'll send you some. It, it's on YouTube. Yeah, YouTube. So it just has like live 105 on the on the thing, and just it's the radio version. Well, I just I I looked up live 105 on YouTube, and, and all that comes up are things that I that I had posted. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that's what I was looking for too. You were doing the postcards. I think you used to read postcards on live 105. Well, the yeah, letters. letters. We got letters. Lap, there's some lap girl who sent one to you. Some girl who sat on your lap. Uh, Stuff, a so. lot of girls sat on yeah. in those days <laughs> when I had a lap, you know. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I forgot how fast Dana Gould talked. Oh my yeah. God! <laughs> yes, yes. He just went. He was going a mile a minute. Yep. And and that was on that. Yeah, that was on that show that I had up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was the uh, Alex. I think I was right around Lathrop when I started that one. Was it the Alex Bennett Comedy Hour? Yeah. Because I also yeah, have I the Alex Bennett Recession Special up there somewhere. Yeah, and then which uh, was, uh, the which... one after that was down at uh, the Atrium with Kevin Meany and Larry Larry King. Larry King. Mm -hmm. Kevin, I love Kevin Meany. Oh, yeah. Kevin you know what you know what I noticed that was interesting is um Bobby Slayton. I used to think, oh, he's so he says all these terrible things. Then I listened to it, it's like tame compared to what you hear now. It wasn't that bad, yeah. Well, it, 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 but it certainly wouldn't play today though. That's the problem right. he's yeah, got. The topics, it, is the yeah. material is kind of considered um a non me too friendly. Yeah, okay. Right. Right. That's uh, unfortunate because he's really funny. Oh, yeah. hilarious. Hilarious. I like, too, how he builds. Like, he starts kind of funny, and then he just gets funnier and funnier, which is great a great thing to do. Well, the yeah. thing is, he used to, like, make fun. He made fun of everybody, you yeah. know? Um, uh, and and he, he it, 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 that, that was a great act. But, you know, could he keep doing it today? I don't think so. I think he'd be in a lot of trouble doing it today. So. I think he was best on your show, and he was just free free forming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, the entertainment industry today is so screwed up. And like in the Bay Area, it's really screwed up. Well, I mean, it, it, yeah. a, a guy has an act that is somehow politically incorrect, okay? But that's what he made a, a point of being, and that's what made yeah. him so funny. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, today, nobody has a sense of humor anymore about things that are politically incorrect. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, and it's like, not only do they not have a sense of humor, but they are actively punishing of those who don't conform to what they think is right. Yeah. Yeah. And that is what really bothers well, me. It's so mccarthy -ish. They sit there and wait for it, and then they bring it up, and then they make a deal out of it. Ah. Well, my question is, you guys, you guys used to listen to my show in the Bay Area. Do you think mm -hmm. I could do that show today? No, probably not. No, hell no, no, no way, you no know. way. Um, and it wasn't even, you know, it wasn't quote unquote dirty. It wasn't even as bad as. Well, I was very, I was, I, I was a little. At it. that time, I was far more sensitive to the treatment of of women, okay, yeah. and homosexuals and things like gays, you know, and things like that. Than just about anybody on the air, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, I mean, as I've told you before, I mean. like, that 
I told the Howard co- used to get in trouble for all that crap, and you were never even close to that. Well, the, no, but uh, the thing is, is that for instance, I, uh, I t- I've told the story before. The one night I'm watching TV, and I see a guy with AIDS, and he's got Carposi syndrome all over his uh, all over his body, you know, those spots, and he's dying in a bed. And I looked at it, and I went, you know, comedians come in in the morning, they make AIDS <clears throat> jokes, and I said, yeah. There's nothing funny about AIDS. And I said, the only reason they're doing AIDS jokes is because it's gays who get AIDS. Yeah. Okay. So the next day I went in, told every comic who came on after that, no AIDS jokes. They're all, I don't want to tell you what to say or not say, but no AIDS jokes. Because I've seen it and it's not funny. Nope. You know, and the only reason you find it funny is because you make it, you know, make AIDS make The only AIDS joke I ever liked was... Uh, uh, what's the worst thing about having AIDS? Uh, ha- oh, having to, <laughs> having to tell your parents you're Haitian. <laughs> you know, so but, I mean, but uh, and uh, you probably didn't get much backlash either, did you? On, on that, no, 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 no. because uh, that was that was a funny joke. You know? No, I mean, uh, from 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 anybody that you asked them not to do those jokes. Oh no, I never got a backlash at all. Yeah. I, I think when I explained it to them, they understood. Yeah. You know? And I just said, I I don't want it, uh, this place uh, to be a repository know, for AIDS jokes. You know? They'll save it for their show or whatever. Right. You know, K- KS Carposi sarcoma is is cancer. It's a real rare form of cancer. That's what a lot of AIDS people are getting. That's what you just talked about, Alex. But, uh, well, it's it's uh, it's it's more than that. It was a, um, a disease which made you immunocompromised. Uh, well, AIDS did that itself, it, well, but, but it, not KS. KS was because you had a, a real weak immune system, and well, then people were getting cancers that human beings don't get. Okay, I, I know. I, they, I had they were getting some. Uh, some died of AIDS. No, but they got some diseases that. Uh, uh, that uh, only pets get, you know, cats get. Yep. And they couldn't figure out how it was transferring itself to humans. And it was just people were so immunocompromised that they got these diseases, which yep. normally and they it's had. Called opportunistic diseases. Exactly. Be- yeah, because so, they had such a low immune system, they couldn't fight off common things. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, so I, I, uh, I made a big deal about that. And I said, do not, do not make no age jokes you know and nobody fought me on it nobody went oh you're censoring us or whatever and i and i would tell them i don't want to tell you what to say and what not to say but please don't and i put it as a please please don't tell any age jokes because i saw somebody on television the other night who had it and this is not a funny disease would would you have said that if you were a dj in in dallas you know, I would have said it no being, matter. Being in San Francisco, I would have said it no matter what. I would have said it no matter where I was. Silly. Really? Okay. You know, okay. I mean, uh, I had a conscience about things that we did on the air. Right. Uh, I don't know if I I could probably be accused of being sexist for some of the humor we did do on the show, or the way that. But you know, though that that was because at the time these things were okay. They were kind of sure. considered all right, and I would not do them today. I was watching yeah. Jeff, Jeff Foxworthy, a show from 15 years ago, and I got to tell you, I don't, I think he'd be in trouble with some of the stuff he says if he was on stage nowadays saying the things he did 15 years ago. Henny Youngman years ago had one line to put him on the map, which was, take my wife, please. Right. Yes. <laughs> my wife, please. And today he probably couldn't do that joke. How about Rickles? Oh, Rickles. Well... See, here again was a situation in which Rickles was unrelentingly um, uh, in bad taste, okay? he yeah. So much so that he did it to everybody, and so that way it didn't bother anybody, okay? Well, oh, we got a Chinese problem? guy in the audience. So you want to do my laundry? Ah, you know. And the Chinese guy would agree to sit in the front before they even... Exactly, did the exactly. Yeah. So... You know, and and mm. does anybody think that Don Rickles really was that way about people? No. I heard he was the nicest, least I, prejudiced person you'd ever. I would he imagine. Never cussed would, in his. Comedy. I would imagine, but today, I don't think even he could do his act, even he when he got not. older. Yeah. 
if he were older and was doing his act, because he, believe me, as you get older, you can get away with a lot more stuff. Uh, and, okay, I have a question, though. Yeah. I've been watching South Park, and they get oh. away with everything still. Oh, yeah. How does yeah. that work? Yeah, I love it. They, have they get new- away with everything. Yes. I mean, as, <laughs> like it was 25, 30 years ago. And South would- Park, yeah, South Park is still, still, they have four new episodes, and it's all attacking everything going on right now. So, I know. It's so amazing. And they're so, I mean, they do everything. Well, they, you know, a couple of years ago, South Park had one of Donald Trump, and it was so funny and so over the hill. He wanted to kick South Park off of the air. He was so mm. about it. All, all their stuff is so dead on. and Oh, it is. It's, it's yeah. great. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Just finished watching the last couple. Of well, what, what you've got on set with South Park's humor is outrage. Yep. It, it, you know, it, they, they're mad. They're mad at what people are doing to other people. They're mad yeah. about the way people are reacting, you know. But <laughs> they I just think... Had, hmm? they, they just had to rush. They just did the last one was about Russia. And Adrian's walking by, and this horse all of a sudden goes sh- shits, and then he gets a hard on the horse. And Adrian's looking up while she's walking by, and I'm like, oh, my God. This, well, you, uh, you know, the thing so is, you know, South Park's very interesting. Do you know when they put those shows to bed? Oh, yeah, they do it that week. That right? week. 60 yeah. Minutes did it. Didn't they, 60 Minutes do a thing on it? Yeah. Well, they, do, mm-hmm. they, do, they literally do those things so they, can, so they, can, they have a fast way of animating. Yeah. And, well, the uh, legs don't move. Well, no, they, that was a problem they had. They went from traditional animation to computer animation, but they wanted to make their characters still look like they did on the original when they were animated. So that's why they still walk that way. They don't have to do it that way, but they do it that way because they still want that charm of that uh, stilted animation. Yeah. But now they're using CGI, but... 15 years ago when they first started it were they using how were they doing the animation i mean obviously they were doing it they were doing it by cutting paper out and putting it on drawing and flip flip drawings and then shooting a frame at a time Uh, technology uh, has come up to the point where they can use cgi and it's well they're just using they're just using computers to do it and they can do they can turn out a show every week and the deadline is if the show goes on Sunday, the deadline is Saturday. Right. You know? Yeah. Enough time for Comedy Central to look at it or maybe not look at it, you know? Incredible so. that they can do animation that fast. It's, it used to be such a tedious and long process. Well, they do it that fast. A lot of others yeah. don't. Okay. Right. But here, yeah. they want to keep up to date because I, I watch them sometimes. When I've watched them sometimes, I imagine next week there will be something about the Ukraine on south park you know well i mean yeah. it's just happening now so yeah they they did so, they did russia with putin but they did yeah. and the russia so with they putin started on already yeah, yeah 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 so you see i mean uh they that's how they keep up to date and then they only do about eight a year and then they're on the you know they wait for another year to pass by um family guy on the other hand i think takes about six months to a year for them to get an episode out, really? Yeah, that's it's not, and, and they're doing they're doing much more e- not easy animation. Okay. But, uh, what about Married with Children? That wouldn't go over very well today either. <laughs> All in the family. Well, you All know something? Family, I don't yeah. think anybody can get away with anything anymore because there's somebody out there that's going to complain. Right. And, uh, you know, I just, it always bothered me that, uh, that people would be bothered by anybody saying, oh, well, that's in bad taste. Well, how dare they tell me what's in bad taste? Let right. me judge for myself what's in bad taste. Mm-hmm. You know? Hey, I'll do something in bad taste right now. Uh, why do women have periods? Because they deserve them. Okay, thank you, everybody. I'll be here. I won't be here next week because I will be <laughs> on somebody's not list. Not monetized, that's for sure. Well, you're not monetized now. Well, yeah. I am monetized, but oh, I, I after that, Joe. Who knows? After that, I won't be monetized for the next year. Okay, but I mean, I just think that I don't like people telling us what is right and what's wrong. Don't they understand 
the best thing you can do is teach people what's right and what's wrong or to tell you know inform them and let them decide whether it is going to be or not be you know yes Thank uh, you. now here is somebody and i'm i bet it's somebody that calls this show all the time who is coming on as horace shit <laughs> uh, let's uh, see let's patrick see. It, could it be I think it's Patrick. You think it's Patrick? Let's yeah, see. I don't know why. I just do. Uh, uh, let's John. see here. Uh, no, it oh. isn't. But it is. Uh, who is this? Oh, he's connecting his audio. Connect it's actually audio. more right. shit. There you go. He's been here before. Yeah, he's been here before with that name. Yeah. Oh, hello, Horace. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. How are you? We can hear you. We can hear you. Where are you, ca where are you calling from again? Uh, I'm Germany. Germany. I'm Roughly a thousand miles from the conflict in Ukraine right now. How many miles away? Uh, approximately a thousand, I'd say. Oh, a thousand miles. Yeah, I'd have to drive to get there. I'd have to go through uh, Czechia and Slovakia. Yeah. So I'm in Ukraine. Well, I bet, but you don't have any reason to go there right now, right? <laughs> I'm trying to stay out of it, but every time I see a, one of those children on a Table being operated in, child has been wounded by the Russian bombs. Well, it's a good thing they're only hitting. Uh, well, will military you let him finish what he's saying, please? I wish I could pick up my M16 and uh, go over there and join the, the resistance. Army. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, you I, know, I, scored, I managed to score expert when I was uh, qualifying with my M16 back in, the, back in the day. Sometimes I wish I could. Just go over there and, and help with the cause, you know. Yeah. Qu question is, how, how can you can you get into the country? Is that possible? They'll take you. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're yeah they're, <laughs> they're taking volunteers from all yeah. around, you know. So I, I imagine I could if I, you know, I'm wonder, a little too old to. I wonder if they take me. I could get in, into a tree <laughs> with my sniper rifle. Join the French Foreign Legion. There you go. I heard some uh uh. Polish, they were going in from the Polish side. Yeah, yeah. A dozen of them went in today. Right, there's Pol ways to get in. Even <laughs> well, no Poland military walk up there and tell them you want to fight. They'll give you a gun and say, "Go on in." Poland would let you through because they're a NATO country. Yeah, yeah I've, been, I've been watching uh, BBC primarily, and a lot of Brit British uh, uh, ex servicemen are volunteering <laughs> too. Yep. You you know something? It's funny. I'm I'm just absolutely immortal fear of death but the thought came to mind that i get on a plane and go over there you know yeah uh because just pissing I, a lot of people off plane pissing them off well i i just think okay here's what i'm thinking we can't send troops in because right. it's not a nato country and so therefore we don't have any jurisdiction to do that we can supply right. them with weapons we can give them international support by doing sanctions against Russia and so on. But we can't physically go in there. I mean, if we could physically go in there tomorrow, we just take a goddamn plane or a drone and just go over that road for 40 miles with all those trucks and just completely obliterate them. Uh, <coughs> one nuclear bomb will do that. Well, yeah, you but you can't do that because then it's right. c catastrophe. Well, you don't want to do that. Did you, did you know that Australia is not part of Well, wait a minute. Let, let me finish my thought first. Oh, okay. Uh, but, I mean, uh, I just feel that maybe they ought to start saying, everybody, head for the Ukraine. Head for Ukraine. Bring your, Everybody's got a gun. Ukraine, okay? And get enough people over there that Russia won't screw with them. I mean, right now they've got <laughs> they've got thirty million people there who can fight against the Russians, against their hundred and what fifty thousand, minus say four thousand that are dead already. You know, the only I think the only way you're going to be able to even up the score with the Russians is by having a fighter jet. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't think Ukraine Ukraine hasn't gone to the area yet, as far as I know. Yeah. Uh, yes, they have. They oh, have. They there's have? The, there's like this this fighter that's amazing. This they they call him the Ghost or something. He shot down several Russian planes. Mi they don't. Mi nobody know. Mig Mig twenty nine. Well, think. why don't they yeah. why don't they strafe that highway with all the uh, the uh, trucks on? Yeah, I don't understand that either. I I think they've I mean, been shot down. 
What? I thought they'd been shot down. What? Uh, maybe they have anti-aircraft all over. Part of the Russian convoy because, is uh, anti-aircraft. Uh, yeah, because of the thing is, those... They need to that, shoot down whoever tries to fly. So, I think they have some drones. Send some drones over and drop. They do have drones. They have send drones over there. Yeah. And I said the problem is that they may start bombing higher from higher altitude. Yeah. So a lot of those stinger missiles and those things won't be able to get them. Yep. Yep. They they're just them. intimidating the shit out of everybody. Well, it's like me, we, exactly. if we blow up all those trucks, okay, then we're just going to yeah. watch more let, missiles. Let me ask Horace. Horace, what is your real first name? So I can call you by your first name. Oh, uh, uh, that was that's a, that goes way back. I, uh, my real name is Steve, but I uh, didn't want to log in as Steve because uh, you already have like two or three Steves on your cabinet panel. From time to time. I don't think we, we don't uh, have a Steve, a Steve tonight, but oh, well, you, uh, Horace, Steve, whatever. You're living in Germany. I, right. are you, are, you're not German, you're American, right? American uh, government employee. I work at an uh, army base here in Germany. Oh, okay. American army base. You must have German neighbors, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What do they think about what's going on in Ukraine? I don't know. You know, I haven't really interacted with the Germans much. I mostly uh, just interact with the uh, yeah. other Americans over here uh, and American uh, soldiers and American uh, civilian employees on base. Yeah. Well, and how do the soldiers my, feel? My landlord's my, my landlord is German. I live in his house, the uh, upper floor of his house, but I uh, hardly see him. Yeah. Germany yeah. is supplying yeah. weapons to Ukraine, so that yeah. might tell yeah, you Germany what Germany is supplying weapons. Yeah. Oh That's yeah. Good. Well, My the U.S. is German. I'll tell you what she's saying. What? My mother-in-law is German. I'll tell you what she's saying. Go ahead. This is Hitler all over again. Plus. My ex-wife was. Uh, she like comes it. from Ulm, and she actually, you know, Konigsberg was where she was run out of in 1944. It's Hitler, you know, the worst part. Her mother was grabbing her by the arm, took her out to the coast. She escaped out to Duns, Duns, Dunsgurg, Dunsgurg, out of the coast. Her mom wanted to get on a boat. She decided, no, we better not get on that boat. The boat went out to the sea. It sunk. So she turned around and went the other way. Her mom had a good sense. Yeah. Took her back the other way. They ended up on a train, ended up on the other side of Germany. She mm -hmm. escaped all that shit. Yeah. And then the Konigsberg uh, blew up the whole city and they turned it into Kaliningrad. Horace, you were trying to say something? Oh, um, uh, I have relatives by marriage in in uh, Russia. I was married to a, a Russian uh, neurologist. Mm -hmm. And uh, her brother-in-law, who became my brother-in-law by marriage, was a colonel in the Russian army. Uh and they're still there. I haven't heard anything about them lately. I don't know how they're doing. And uh, one of our friends was from, uh, well, uh, we lived in Indiana at the time after we got married. And one of our friends were, uh, was from uh, uh, Ukraine. Her mother lived in Kiev. I don't know if she still does or not. So, yeah. It's, uh, it, it's sort of personal for me, too, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I uh, I have uh, we have a friend uh, named uh, Natalia, whose parents is she's from Russia and her parents are still in Russia and she's very worried for them, because right now, it's getting rough in Russia. It's getting terrible in Russia. Uh, forget about all the censorship that has gone on in the last couple of days, but the the ability for them to be free, she can't send them money. Right. She can't yeah, send the money. Down the switch, yeah. yeah, and the and the inflation that's happening over there. You think it's bad here? It's terrible there. Mm -hmm. uh, and minus a penny, huh? Minus a penny. It's My, worth. Minus a penny. The the uh, a ruble, ruble is worth less than a penny. Less than a penny. Yeah. Less than a penny. Yeah. So you can, imagine, you, can, now, you can imagine. You can imagine how the people over there are hurting. It's going to crash. Yeah. yeah, I mean. Yes, uh, Alan. So Kevin Kevin said it's Hitler plus. The plus is Hitler didn't have nuclear weapons. That's the plus. Yeah, well, you know, he's already taken over one plant. He's got another plant. Yep. It's the second one. But he's r having these guys work this nuclear plant under gunfire, under gunpoint. Yep. These mm -hmm. guys have been working 36 hours straight. If they screw up, 
It's ugly. Make, the, the, that plant will make Chernobyl look like a cakewalk. Yep. That plant it's, is the largest nuclear plant in Europe. And if both of them go, Europe will have to be evacuated. Yep, yeah. That's what they say. You see, I mean, I think nuclear energy today is quite safe because we have safeguards against them. We don't have safeguards against, des de against despots who want to take them over for their own purpose and maybe ditch the thing so they explode, you know? It always amazes me that he gets enough people to... Everyone's afraid, so they cooperate with them, everybody in the government, because they don't know if they're... You know, they can't go against them because if their friend doesn't, then they're going to get killed. Did you so see that incredible piece of video of Putin and uh, one of uh, a bunch of his people who his generals, his cronies, his yeah. cronies OK, yeah. and one of them decided to take issue with him about yeah. going into uh, 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 Ukraine and uh, he tells him, no, you're wrong. And the guy starts backing down because he knows that if he keeps going in this general direction, he's going to disappear. Okay? I mean, it was incredible to watch. The guy was very definite. You shouldn't be going in there. This is wrong. It's terrible. Blah, 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 blah. Then Putin says something like, uh, no, you're wrong, and you know you're wrong, right? And he goes, yeah, I guess so. You know, I mean, and he backs down completely. If Trump believes that he's friends with Putin, why doesn't the U.S. government send Trump over there? To, he's supposed to be a great negotiator. Well, here's my point. Here's my point. I keep saying, if I were president, because of my relationship with Putin, I could I could have prevented this from happening. No. Well, if you're so important to Putin, why don't you give him a call? Right. Okay. I say we send him over there. Follow Trump and then eliminate the building they end up in. Yeah, both of them are in. I'll, I'll, I'll pay for the bomb. Did, that both of them did, are in. Did, did you, money yeah, on we that. could get a GoFundMe. Go did you hear a GoFundMe for the assassination? Trump I think it'll fill up like that. Oh, wait a minute. Did you hear what Lindsey Graham said today? Lindsey Graham. Yes. The yes, only time yes, I've yes. ever agreed yes. with the man. Uh, he said. I hope that somebody in in Russia is sick and tired of this and assassinates him. Yeah. You he know, say, he shoots him in the head. I think is what he said. Even uh, Trumpy little Trump liquor uh, Nancy Pelosi said to cut off the pipeline, and I'm all for that too. What I was amazed by with Lindsey Graham is it's the first time in years I've agreed with Lindsey Graham. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Right. Same with Nancy. I mean, it's Cut just... Cut off that damn pipeline. It's only 10%. Who cares? Part, I'll pay another problem, 10 cents. 15 part of the problem with killing off Putin is who's next. Yeah. And what will they do? Yeah. Let me ask well, Let me ask uh, uh, Horace or Steve this. Uh, uh, you work on an air base. Is that air base uh, kind Army, of on... Army base. Huh? Army base. Not, a, not an air base. A U.S. Army. Army, Army base. base. Is that Army base on, uh, on alert? Right now, alert. Uh, they haven't issued anything uh, official yet, but we've we've, we've seen a, an influx of troops lately. I think some of them are coming from Fort Hood. And is that Ramstein? No, Ramstein is is uh, far to the west of the. Uh, yeah, but you've but been seeing like, them. You've been seeing them come in from the United States. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I have seen uh, military vehicles headed that, in that direction. Something I hadn't seen before, you know, about a week or so ago. Yeah. On the highway, a convoy headed in that direction. So I don't really know what that was all about. But, uh, yeah, they're trying to cut. Work. They're trying to cut off all access to the Black Sea. Mm -hmm. well, we're, right. we're we're building oh, Alex, up. We're building up a lot Taylor, of ships there too. Taylor, Alex, uh, if it's possible, could you change my name to Steve so that I can? Uh, oh, I can do it. Here, hold on a second, folks. I'll show you how. I'll show you how you do it. So you go it's here. The gab net world is horse shit. Uh, it, uh, the, however, the next time you use it, it'll go back to horse shit. But if yeah. I say, uh, let me see here. Uh, let me see here. Where is it? Uh, uh, there's got to be a place here. Oh, rename. There we go. Rename, and I go Steve. And uh, so we don't make it too different. Steve shit. Uh, here we go. <laughs> there we go. And we rename you, and there we go. Oh, See, there, there it is. There we are. Okay. So, anyway.
Um, the reason I logged on with that name initially is that as you guys have been talking about the show, uh, shit's preach, you know. Right. Time. Right. I thought it would be right. uh, uh, slightly humorous to log in with that name because uh, supposedly Horace Shit was the founder of the Shit's Creek community. So. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> anyway, um, Jeff, what you thinking about about what's going on in Ukraine right now? Uh, it, it's a terrible. I just, I yeah, terrible position, and and the one thing is, all of these European countries that are right next door to them are really not doing very much. Well, they can't. Uh, what you know? I, well, they can't. Uh, you know, the I, one I, thing that I heard from from Poland is they've called and said anybody who wants to come to Poland. It's fine. And not only that, a lot of people, we have extra uh, places in our house because nobody else lives there anymore. And so your family can stay there yeah. at, at our house. Poland is also NATO, and so there's not much chance that Putin would invade Poland. They also, they also have a great um, uh, motivation in Poland for taking these people in because it'll bring an end to all the Polish jokes. Mm -hmm. you know, so. Most of the border countries, if not all of them, are taking in refugees. I think Poland has taken in at least 150,000 now. Yeah. That's the last number I saw. Yeah. I'm sure we'll take in some too. You know, what hmm. you just said, Alan, I don't, I don't put it past Putin to uh, start pushing on some NATO countries either. I really don't. I really don't. Well, here's the not. here's the thing. Uh, I said I was thinking yesterday. I was telling Marjorie. I said, you know, we really can't go into the Ukra into Ukraine because we, uh, uh, we, you know, we might start World War Three and whatever. That's the kind of thing I think is the trump card that Putin has. Is that fear that everybody has that if we confront Russia head on. We're into World War Three, and I think we're not. I think that we should meet his bluff for I the do, sake for the Zelensky sake of humanity. Begging, okay. Begging for NATO to impose a no In a way, he's yeah. almost there already. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to step on you, Steve. Oh, that's all right. I feel like I stepped on you. <laughs> it's a mutual stepping going on. <laughs> But no, it's it's uh, you, know, you know what? I, what? Yeah, maybe we ought to call his bluff. Maybe you're right. What you know? what what do you what do you think? Were you saying something, Kevin? No, I was just saying. In a way, we we were already there. He's done. Uh, he's hit every uh, war crime in the book already. Mm -hmm. He's he's already hit nuclear power plants. He's holding those ransom right now. Yep. I mean, what else can he do to not? Uh, cause a world war. He's basically on the verge. He's of also it. using cluster bombs, which are against the Geneva cluster Convention. bombs, vacuum bombs. Yeah, yeah. What I, else? I, I I think that we'll get involved if he goes into a NATO country. Yeah, but he I don't think he will unless he. No, really he will. won't now. But once this is all over with, he could say, "Well, look what I did here. I can go right into Poland." Well, this I is want. why I think we should go in right now. Because I think we should meet his bluff. I don't That's think I, mean. I don't think he'll take a chance of going to war against NATO, because if he goes to war against NATO, NATO has about uh, let's see he, he I don't know how much how much weaponry he has, but NATO has something like three hundred times five million five million compared to his hundred and fifty thousand or whatever yeah. shit it is. He can't go against NATO. Which would be fine. I'd love to sit there and watch that on TV. Yeah, the only thing that bothers me, and here's, here's the thing that really bothers me, is the impact upon the Russian people, who are really not responsible for any of right. this. Right, you know? yeah. yeah. And, and yeah, that's, right that's what you've got to be careful about. And uh, today, he uh, closed down uh, Facebook and Twitter, and, oh. I, and I believe Google, uh, in... Uh, in uh, uh, the Soviet no, in, in Russia. Who did we did or they did? In Russia, they closed them down. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, because it is against the law and punishable by 15 years in prison 
to simply disagree and spread information disagreeing with what's going on in Ukraine. Well, it's too bad that didn't happen here with all the misinformation about COVID. Well, Trump. he's calling it. Putin is calling it fake news. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Gee, I wonder where that term was coined. And you can get 15 years in, pres in prison for disseminating fake news. So all those people, by the way, that were arrested over the last couple of weeks, they could get 15 years in prison. They just passed the law in, in Russia today. Yeah. Um, you know, so there's no there's no discussion allowed on this. You know? And that 80-year-old lady that got taken away could be put in jail for 15 years. Yeah. Uh, uh, let me ask Hello, Steve. Buddy. Steve, how do you feel about all of this? What's been your take on it? Me or the other Steve? Trucker, Steve? Steve? Not Trucker Steve. Is he Trucker still Steve, there? yeah. Here? Yeah. I know. I was, I was asking you, what, what is your take on what's going on in uh, Ukraine? Well, it's scary because uh, uh, Christina Freeland uh, is our deputy prime minister. Yeah. Um, supposedly said um, that Canadians need to be. Uh, Worried about collateral damage. Yeah. And that fucking scared the shit out of me. Yeah. Like, scared the shit out of a lot of people. That's dangerous talk. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, I, I didn't like what she said there. Like, uh, that, that's just scaring the fucking country. Like, well, Canada's part of NATO, and so NATO would defend Canada and vice versa. So, I read in the news that Canada opposed its waters to uh, Russian shipping a few yep. days ago. Yep, they sure did. And um, I think we're seizing some boats of oligarchs and things oh, like yeah, that. Oh, yeah, that's great. Oh, yeah. I love it. Yeah, I think they should line them up and blow those things up in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> exactly. Every, Absolutely. Yeah, for every building you blow up in the Ukraine, Here's we're going to blow up. million dollar boat. We're going to blow Boom. up one of these yachts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Good idea. Yeah, I think we just solved the whole problem. problem. Maybe we can get Trump and Putin to get on one of those boats and then blow it up, like you said earlier. And put it on Facebook so he can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, oh, man. It's just, you know, it's such, it's so sad. I don't know. What, what is the end game going to be with this? He has Who no knows? I, he doesn't know. But no, and that's, that's the destroying thing. what he's trying to take over. The only thing worse than a madman running a war like this is a crazy madman running something like this. And he, I think, is crazy now. He's got MS. I think he doesn't have his wits about him. I don't think he's being rational. And uh, it's, it's horrible. He is. He's yeah. sick. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Well, let me play the theme here. Uh, gee, a nice, nice night tonight. Join us again, Steve. Dance me. if you want to. Uh, Jeff, thank you so much for being with us tonight, as always. Uh, it's always a pleasure when you're around. Alan, thank you very much for being here with some of your medical advice. Uh, I won't call you Doc Allen like he calls you because uh, uh, I already have a Doc on this show already, although he doesn't call as much anymore from Australia. Um uh, we have uh, Brian. Thank you so much, Brian. And we saw little Missy there coming in. Yeah, she drew something for you, but she's not finished. She's not we'll finished? We'll send it tomorrow. Yeah, oh. we're going to send it in the mail tomorrow. Oh, you're going to send it in the mail? Oh. With, with the hat, yeah. We've got a couple things for you. Oh, oh with my cap and everything. Yeah. You know Does it have your logo on the front of it? Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I don't wear hats. My head's too big. Too much brain. Hey, Steve, thank you so much for being here tonight. We really uh, appreciate you, uh, it. Nixon had a big head. Yeah. Hey, man. And uh, thank, you, thank you to Ray, and thank you to uh, uh, Kevin, and uh, uh, also Steve, nice seeing you. Uh, please do call us again when you get a chance. I know there's a disparity in time, because what time oh, yeah. is it over there right now? It's almost 6 a.m. in the morning. What time? 6 a.m. 6 a.m. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there, oh, there we go. I, I love, love Alex. Alex. <laughs> well, we love you too, Adrian. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye uh, at you. Let me see here. Let me see. I just uh, got to go find the thing there. I got to get in the in the. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Okay, I'm saying goodbye to them. 
That's it for tonight. That's it for this week. I'll see you Monday at 4 o'clock on Facebook with uh, our uh, pop-up show. And then we'll be back again next, uh, oh, yeah, like next Wednesday. Uh, same time, same station in life, 1030. And uh, uh, that should be a lot of fun. Uh, we'll be back again. Uh, and in the meantime, as always, I think I remember my closing. If you see her, tell her I love her, okay? And everybody, be safe out there. Wear a mask, get vaccinated, uh, or just don't get near me. Thanks for being with us. Have a nice weekend, everybody.